parking lot and the Army O metal shop is where I hung out, man. It was some good times. I really appreciate it. So um, anyway, thanks a lot. I, I, I'm very grateful to be um, nominated in, into this Hall of Fame. It means a lot to me. Uh, everybody have a good weekend and enjoy. The Lanza family. All of the three generational families that are being honored today are worthy in their own right. The Lanzas have a unique history, though. While the generations of Ingalls and the Ramirez's, who were Armio grads, have had many different career paths over the years, the Lanzas have been laser focused on one goal perpetuating and enlarging the legacy of Susun Valley's oldest continuously operating winery, Wooden Valley Winery, now in its 90th year. <laughs> Fate is a wondrous thing. But for the fact that the patriarch of the Lanza family, Mario Lanza, had his leg injured in a car accident during a World War II blackout, and doctors advised him to move to warmer climates like Solano County, Wooden Valley Winery, or at least the one that's owned and operated by the Lanza family, might not exist. When Mario and Lena Lanza, who were both from a small town in Italy, moved to Susin Valley, they partnered with the Brea brothers at Wooden Valley Winery in 1944, and 11 years later, they bought them out. Mario and Lena's son, Richard, was the first Lanza to attend Armio, and he graduated with the class of 1958. Now, if you do the math, you'll discover he was now 83 years old. There's this thing that goes, you're not a spring chicken. But in Richard Lanza's case, he actually is. You see, he was born in April of 1940, and since it was the spring, his mother Lena, with her broken English, said when he was born, look at that spring chick. And the nickname Chick has stuck all these years. Now, Chick married an army O grad, Adrian Strubel, from the class of 1959 and he became the winemaker at Wooden Valley Winery. He actually delivered wine by the jug and barrel directly to families from uh, Susan City to San Francisco, kind of like the milkman, you know, the wine man. Uh, Chick and Adrian had four sons, Rick, Ron, Larry, and Ken, who were respectively from the Armio classes of 1980, 1982, 1985, and 1988. Now when me and a lot of other kids were watching Scooby-Doo cartoons, and playing with Tonka trucks. The Lanza boys were already driving actual tractors and doing the myriad things it takes to keep an agricultural-based business going and growing. Now all four of Chick and Adrian's sons run the family business. Rick is the winemaker, Ron focuses on sales and marketing, and Larry and Ken manage the vineyards together. Now let me just say that while I love my brothers, <laughs> I couldn't work with him, <laughs> not for no 40 and 50 years. <laughs> but like Ron, Ron Lanza said uh, recently when I, when I talked to him, he said that they have the challenge like any other family. But they know that the bottom line is this, if they don't work harmoniously together, they won't have the benefit of living in the beautiful Susin Valley, being their own bosses, and literally enjoying the fruits of their labor. Please everyone join me in welcoming the Lanza family into the Army Hill High School Hall of Fame. So, um, thank you, what a great honor. Um, best thing about my class was Tony was in it. And look at what Tony's done here tonight and uh, today's afternoon and what he's done with the alumni and all the alumni. Um, much, much appreciated. Uh, one of the, yeah, thank you. One of the big things um, Tony mentioned is the how do four brothers work together and get along? And he's right. Um, a lot of you guys have got to visit Susan Valley and it's a beautiful place. Uh, but one thing that really started with is working hard. We all learned how to work hard very young. My dad taught that. But I think my dad got it. You know, my dad was a pretty big guy. And football coach wanted to play football, I believe. 
But my dad didn't want to hurt anybody. He didn't want to play football. So he's had a famous teacher. Not too many people talked about FFA here tonight, but uh, he had a famous teacher named Oscar Seven. And Oscar taught him how to be an ag guy. Taught him how to weld. So those skid plates you push with your shoulder pads, my dad made those at Army High School. Um, and Army O, that part of it, ag was probably what he learned from Oscar. Just came through, um, through to all of us. And to us brothers, everybody but myself knows how to weld really good. Um, <laughs> And like uh, Tony mentioned, we also have all different roles in the winery, and we kind of fit into those roles. But those roles were filled as we came out of Harmony High School. And uh, Rick here, standing next to me, is our winemaker. And uh, the other two brothers are Larry and Ken, do the vineyard side, and I like to say I do all the talking and all the drinking, so that's the support side. <laughs> Um, anyway, I wish my dad could be here today with this. Um, he can't be here today. He's recovering from some medical issues, but um, along with my mom. But um, my dad is really the true Armio Indian. Uh, we were all Armio Indians, but my dad was the true Armio Indian. And the only thing I'm really jealous about is I didn't get to be an Armio Indian in the 50s. I think that would have been a lot of fun. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm really sick. Ron said, he does all the talking, so I don't have anything much to say, but I just wanted to thank the Alumni Association for recognizing our family. I mean, Armio is really important to us. We all graduated there. Actually, my oldest daughter graduated from Armio, too, and, um, and I just thank you for your support in our business and everything that's done for us. Thank you. There's uh, 12, there were 12, the four of us brothers had 12 children. Rick mentioned that his oldest daughter was the only one to graduate from Army. And then, because some school called Rodriguez came up and they sent us all over there. In fact, we barely made it to Army because right before um, we were to go to Army, everybody was going, everybody, actually, everybody was going to Fairfield and they switched it to Army. And fortunately, um, if you had an older sibling and you went to, it was already in Fairfield, you went to Fairfield. But anyway, we're glad we went to Armio, and there's so many friends and families out here that all went to Armio. It's just like one big happy family. So thank you, and um, it's a great honor for the whole family. Thank you. Peggy Linville. Estimate Peggy Linville uh, at your own peril. <laughs> Linville has a black belt in karate and kobutu, an Okinawan weapons based martial art, and keeps in shape these days by boxing with a trainer. Now, I'm not trying to start any rumors up here, but I can neither confirm nor deny that Disney is considering a Marvel movie based on <laughs> Peggy Linville. Her superpower, which was clear to anyone who was at Armio between 1970 and 2001, is being able to focus the energy of several young women on a softball team until they are a unified and powerhouse unit. She shepherded several squads of women to softball glory, with the greatest being the 1978 team that steamrolled the Monticello Empire League on its way to a 23-0 record and a state championship. Now, yes, absolutely. Now, that fact would be awesome enough, but it is even more remarkable because in the biggest game, the Sac Joaquin Section Tournament of Champions finale, when it was all on the line, the Indians were not at full strength. The day before the championship, there was a disciplinary issue, and she had to make the hard but correct decision to bench two of her crucial players. She actually had to put the scorekeeper on second base because they didn't have enough players. The Indians were facing Bella Vista of Fair Oaks, who were the defending champions. It had been a back and forth affair, and when the dust settled, due to a timely triple by Ivan Jackson and a game-winning grounder by pitcher extraordinary Margaret Sutter, the Indians emerged victorious five to four. Linville was named Coach of the Year. 
Remember that song, Play That Funky Music by Wild Cherry? You know that song? Everybody knows that song. But I can't think of another Wild Cherry song. Because they were one hit wonders. That ain't the story with Peggy Linville. She was more like the Bee Gees. The hits, pun intended, kept coming. The 1978 team was not a fluke. Two years later, they won the Sack Joaquin section title again and captured male titles in 77, 78, 80, and 83. In her 31 years at Armio, Peggy Linville coached, coached uh, field hockey, basketball, vo volleyball, and took over badminton when her friend and colleague, Karen Meek, retired. One lesson that Linville always tried to practice which served her well was, if you respect students, they will respect you. Ms. Lindell was more than just a great softball coach. Ms. Lindell, thank you for showing me the contribution that I made to our team. I most definitely was not one of the star players on our MEL championship team. However, you taught me what my role was and how I contributed to the team. And you pointed out to me what my strengths were. I now have since used your words of wisdom to show other kiddos who might not be the stars on their team that they too can help out in their own special ways. Thank you for not just being a great coach, but for being a great teacher. I will never forget you. Thank you. And now moving from the on deck circle to the plate, please join me in welcoming Peggy Linville into the Army Hill High School Hall. I talked to her a few days ago, and her brother, unfortunately, um, had to have surgery, so she could not be here. She was on the, she was going to come, but so we'll get this award to her. Dave Marshall. Yes. Now, if you were on Jeopardy, and the answer was Dave Marshall, you should buzz in and give the correct question, which is, what did the College Sports Hall of Fame, I mean, the Sonal College Sports Hall of Fame, the St. Patrick St. Vincent High Sports Hall of Fame, the Vallejo Sports Hall of Fame, and the Armio High School Hall of Fame have in common. All those Halls of Fame acknowledgments is not the only way that baseball coach Marshall's achievements have been honored. In 2000, Armio's Field of Dreams was renamed Dave Marshall Field. So why all the accolades? Well, Dave Marshall lives and breathes America's pastime. He passed his vast experience on to the numerous young men during his tenure at Armio and captured six Monticello Empire League champion, uh, titles in the process. Marshall grew up in Vallejo and was an outstanding first baseman. At St. Vincent's, he was an all-leagues uh, selection. After high school, he was named the MVP of the Solano College team in 1969. That same year, he was drafted by the San Francisco Giants and offered a contract by the Los Angeles Dodgers, but the timing just wasn't right. He chose to get married and start a family and has never regretted it. Uh, Marshall's diamond prowess can't be overstated. In fact, he later played for the Chico State Wildcats for two years, but was still named Athlete of the Decade for the 1970s. Before coming to Armio, Marshall coached at St. Patrick St. Vincent, which captured their first Catholic Athletic League Championship in 1979. Then in his first year at Armio, they won the MEL, and repeated the accomplishment in 89, 93, 97, 2000, and 2001. When Angelo Rodriguez High School opened in 2001, Marshall made the difficult decision to leave Armio and become the new school's athletic director and PE teacher. He looked forward to the challenge of building all the school's sports from the ground up as well as the entire PE program. And in the extra innings department of his career, Marshall later became a vice principal at several schools in the district and then finished his educational endeavors as principal of Crystal before retiring in 2011. Although he's proud of his accomplishments and the accolades he elicited, it's the relationships that he developed over the years that mean the most to him. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Coach, Dahl, Coach Dave Marshall as he's welcomed in the Army High School Hall of Fame. My dear friend of more than 30 years, and uh, the figures on his Mel championships 
Hall of Fame accomplishments, educational accomplishments, are all very memorable. But uh, what is most memorable is the relationships that he formed with his fellow educators uh, and with his students and with his athletes. Mr. Flenner, uh, when you pitched for the Jays, I got a call from Dave one day. The game wasn't on regular television at the time, and so he and I went over to Paradise Golf Club to watch the game. You pitched magnificently. And during that entire time, Dave just sat there and focused on you, never said a word, and I could see how proud he was of you being one of his former athletes. I'll never forget that day sitting there watching him enjoy one, one of his own. <laughs> Similarly, on the night that Major League Baseball in 1994 went on strike, the last game that was played in the major leagues before it ended that memorable season was at the Oakland Coliseum. And playing first base that night for an injured Mark McGuire was an Armio first baseman, Jim Bowie. And to see Dave and I were at the game, his family was at the game, and uh, once again, he was just mesmerized by the fact that one of his own was on the field. Unfortunately, the season ended. That was the last game that was played before the strike ended that season. When I first met Dave at Armio, we became friends and he said, uh, I'd like to take you to meet my family. And I thought that, that was kind of unusual. We hadn't known each other that well. But he did me one of the greatest gifts that anyone ever got because I got to meet his late father, Clarence Marshall who was almost at every Armio sporting event you could think of. He, he lived till 93 and he's been gone now about 15 years. Dave's mother, who was 102 years old, still living, and she has the distinct, unusual address change of having gone as a young woman from the 200 block of Carolina Street to the 300 block of Carolina Street, where she still lives today. Dave would, would love to have been here today. Uh, I will tell him how magnificent this is. Uh, one of the great thoughts I had today sitting here is that this type of program should be shown as part of the orientation for every incoming Armio freshman <laughs> and show it to the sophomore, junior, and senior class. They're now the Royals. Vallejo Apaches are, are now the Red Hawks. Uh, the world does change, but uh, Armio Indians will always be the, the great people that they are, and I'm honored to be here to accept this award on Dave's behalf. Thank you. Doug Martin. Anyone ever had an older sibling that was so awesome in a particular field and the, the, sh the shadow they cast was hard to escape from? Well, try being the younger brother of George Martin. George was a standout athlete and student at Armio in football and basketball, had a successful college career, went to the pros, and won a Super Bowl. Sheesh. But unlike Jan Brady, who would scream, Marsha, 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 or in this case, George, 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 in exasperation, Doug Martin forged his own path and crafted his own legacy. When he played defensive end at Armio, Doug Martin was a tackling machine. They used to have an event called the Jamboree, which was an annual preseason scrimmage between the local high schools. And at the 1975 Jamboree, Doug was named an outstanding defensive lineman. Did I mention that uh, he could hoop? Now, on a personal note, when I was at Armio, I had the honor of playing against Doug in an alumni basketball game, and they whooped up on us. I blame Coach Dahl. <laughs> After graduating from Armio in 1976, Doug Martin played collegiate ball for the Washington Huskies, 
where he helped them win the Rose Bowl in 1978 with their quarterback, Warren Moon. In the 1980 NFL Draft, Martin was chosen in the first round and ninth overall. He went on to play 10 seasons for the Minnesota Vikings and was chosen to go to the Pro Bowl in 1982. A fun fact about Doug Martin, when he played at Armio, his team's colors were purple and gold. With the Washington Huskies, his team's colors were purple and gold. With the Minnesota Vikings, his team's colors were, say it with me, purple and gold. Please welcome Doug Martin into the Armio High School Hall of Fame. Barbara McFadden. Yes. Singer, actress, dancer, director, and costume designer, and class of 1973 grad Barbara McFadden comes from a family of singers and inherited her late mother Betty's love of live theater and her signature skills. Barbara's been performing on stages for over five decades now, and she is a model of grace under pressure when the lights go down and the curtains go up. But it wasn't always that way. When she was an eighth grader at Fairfield Elementary, they performed the play HMS Pinafore in concert. She was tapped to sing some of the solos in the show, and afterwards, her dad complimented her on the awesome vibrato she added. It was unintentional vibrato. She was terrified. <laughs> McFadden stayed busy during her high school years at Army High, auditioning and performing in local companies, and was a baton-twirling majorette in the Army Super Band. After high school, McFadden briefly entertained the idea of pursuing theater as a career, but the reality of being, becoming a starving artist didn't really appeal to her. Instead, she has not only been a participant, but also a vocal advocate for community theater. Her philosophy has been to approach everything she does on stage professionally, which is about how you approach it, not necessarily it's how you make a living. Over the years, McFadden performed just about anywhere that had a stage. Sullivan. Uh, middle School, Brantford Elementary School, the Fairfield Community Center, and many more. She performed in 1990 at the opening of the Fairfield Center for Creative Arts. It's the very theater that we're in right now. Cat Ray, McFadden's daughter, did her first show at age four. Barbara took her to rehearsals simply because she didn't want to pay a babysitter. <laughs> Cat became the third generation of the family to fall in love with theater. McFadden, McFadden even got her brother Chuck, a contractor, into the act, and he now regularly designs and builds sets for shows. Barbara is an avid, I mean, award-winning director and costume designer, and has lent her voice to many civic events, like singing the Star Spangled Banner for the Fourth of July parade. She relishes transporting audiences away from everyday life through the magic of theater, and she cherishes the friendships she has made because of it. Please join me in welcoming. Barbara McFadden in the Arnold High School Hall. Hi. Hi. Well, thank you. Um, I'm so humbled and honored to be part of these um, wonderful inductees. And thank you to the yeah. Great work of the Armio Alumni Association. They do so much for Armio High School, past and present. Um, just a quick little story. I remember my freshman year of high school, um, I still was pretty shy, and I took drama classes, I took choir, took all those things, and I got a D in drama. <laughs> and my parents were like, you get A's, why are you getting a D? I was too afraid to get in front of the class and do a book report on one of the scripts that we read. And the teacher said, if you don't get up there, you get a D. Okay. I'm glad I got over that <laughs> so, so I could continue on. And, uh, and I'm just really, really grateful to this and to, um, to everyone who supports Armio High School. Thank you. The Ramirez family. So, 
So if everyone who attended Arneal back in the day was issued their very own Engel, when it came to the first, the final generational inductees, they were issued two because the Ramirez's had some despair. The patriarch and matriarch of the Ramirez family were Rudy from the class of 1950 and Helen from the class of 1951. At Armio, Rudy was a part of the Block A Society, played basketball, and was a member of the Future Farmers of America. Helen dove headfirst into her high school experience and played tennis, basketball, and badminton, was on the yearbook staff, uh, was involved in student government, and sang in the glee club. So just how Armio were Rudy and Helen? Well, they met after a home Armio football game at a favorite Armio restaurant hangout from down from the campus called the Snowman Drive-In. In the 1951 La Mescala yearbook, Helen added to the senior will section, I, Helen Bartley, do will my loving heart to Rudy Ramirez. After serving in the United States Marine Corps during the Korean conflict as a tank commander, Rudy became a successful local business owner, and he and Helen started their family, which then grew, and grew, and grew. This picture only shows 12 kids, but eventually there were 15. Wow. The Ramirez children included Patty, Helen, Stephen, Claudette, Maria, Rudy, Jeff, John, <laughs> I actually wrote in the script, take breath and drink of water, because <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> Becky, Mike, Julie, JB, Chris, Carmen, and Carlos. And they lived with their parents for a while in a standard four bedroom, two bathroom uh, tract home at 360 Hopkins Drive. Now I did a column on the Ramirez's a, a few weeks ago and I talked to Claudette, and the things that I kept asking were like mundane, mundane things. Like I was like, so how did y'all eat at the same time? I was like, laundry, oh my god. I was like, did you guys have like a stretch limo station wagon? I was getting all up in their business, you know? Because you know, I had four brothers, and it was like, uh, we almost drove my mom crazy. So, uh, but evidently, they were not bad kids like we were. <laughs> Uh, Rudy was a res well-respected businessman and passed on his entrepreneurial spirit to his progeny, as well as the vocal prowess both he and Helen possessed. After their children followed in their footsteps and graduated from Army Ohio, they set out to make their own marks and have done so in numerous ways. They include the arts, civil service, small businesses, health care, education, and much more. Please join me in welcoming the Ramirez family into the Army High School Hall of Fame. Much. I, I'm myself and my brother are going to speak, I think, maybe somebody else on behalf of the family. I, I am truly honored for the family that we are inducted with, with such a uh, great bunch of people. Everybody that I've seen up here tonight is just, just great, and, and the Army Alumni Association doing an awesome job. Uh, you know, as, as, as Tony said, my, my mother and father met at Army High School. I also met my wife at Army High School, and my daughter was in the 100th graduating class of Armio High School. So we've had a, a little bit of a uh, career there, I guess you might say. But uh, one thing that I want to just tell, one, one little quick story, and I'll turn it over. Uh, they showed pictures of some of the teachers. Our nurse Arvin was, was one that uh, really had a memory with. I, uh, last day of school, I think it was 1972, a bunch of us decided we were going to ride our motorcycles down the hallways of Armio. Uh, so about eight of us lined up in the parking lot, and I was the only one that made it through because I think Mr. Brown, the woodshop teacher, stopped everybody. So as I went past the office, Nurse Arvin had come out because she heard the bike coming and, and tried to snatch me off the bike, literally. But I, I was just a little bit quicker than she was on the bike, and I, I was able to make it away. However, it did get expelled for the last two periods of the day. I was back the next year. Anyway, uh, thanks again. You know, I think we're all very honored to be here in such great company. Um, you know, we've got a nice small family, and we have to thank our parents for teaching us how to work and teaching us to be good people. And uh, we just, we're in great company, and this is for our parents who have who did the best they could for us. Thank you so much.
I'm Maria, and I'm number five. And I have to say something just because I always have to say something. Um, I married um, Larry Glassoff, who's not the artist, he's, a, he's the brother, he's the farmer, but they are part of the, those guys are part of the Chadbourne family also. Um, and that's just a side note. When my husband and I got married,